Welcome to Alaska Matters with Chris Story. To reach Chris, call 226-3933. 226-3933. Now, giving you something to talk about, here's Chris Story. Alaska Matters, and so do you. I'm so good to be back in Homer, Alaska, here at the Command Center for Alaska Matters. As you know, for the last two weeks, I've been broadcasting from our mobile command center down in central Florida, off the coast in the Gulf of Mexico from a small island called Cedar Key. But I am so glad to be back here in my home state, in your state, in a state of mind that is just absolutely pure and open. I love Alaska. I'm just so glad to be back. Hey, did you hear about the little old lady that answered a knock on the door one day to be confronted only by what would appear to be a well-dressed young man carrying a vacuum cleaner? Good morning, said the young man. If you could take just a couple of minutes of your time, I'd like to demonstrate the latest in high-powered vacuum cleaners. Go away, said the old lady. I'm broke and haven't got any money. And she proceeded to close the door on the salesman. Quick as a flash, the young man wedged his foot in the door and pushed it open and said, Don't be so hasty, ma'am. Not until you've seen my demonstration. And with that, he emptied a bucket of horse manure onto the hallway carpet. Now... If this vacuum cleaner does not remove all traces of the horse manure from your carpet, madame, I will personally eat the remainder. The old lady stepped back and said, Well, let me get you a fork, Sonny, because they shut my power off this morning. (laughs) When somebody tells you they're broke, they be broke. Catherine Ponder said, I've never been broke. She said, excuse me. She said, I've never been poor, but I've been broke many times. Well, what's the difference? She said, being broke is a temporary situation. Being poor is a state of mind. So with that, I want to talk to you about your state of mind. As you know, um, I just came back from Florida, and the last leg of my trip, I have, to, I have to just say thank you, Alaska Airlines. I really, really am so grateful for Alaska Airlines for how else would I have had the Soviet Union-style flight that I was able to partake in the back of a cattle car. That's right, we flew not first class, not middle class, but we flew last class all the way back from Seattle. We were greeted by a a ticket agent that could be probably the twin brother to the soup Nazi on Seinfeld. And he said, oh, by the way, gate C-16A, that's that door over there. And what you're going to do is you're going to go down the stairs. Now, at no time, said the Alaska Airlines ticket agent, no time should you get under the wing or near the engine. But you're going to go to the back of the plane. You're going to board at the back of the plane. You are behind cargo. You're on a freight plane. That's right. Oh, it was so great. Everybody in the gate was looking around at each other, slack jawed, and said, What is going on around here? What do you mean? There's no jetway, of course. How would we know? We were not told anything until we got there at almost midnight. It was such a treat. I mean, it really was. And, and the people that ignored us as we were walking along the tarmac on the painted line, and you tried to make eye contact and say hello, and they, they just looked away. That was a real treat. Thank you, Alaska Airlines. I appreciate that. And, and just, just so you know, I had a long conversation with them this morning, and here's how, according to the representative of Alaska Airlines, here's how you can avoid flying in last class along with me back from Seattle. You simply say, I choose not to fly on one of your cargo flights, please. Oh, well, I added to that. I said, well, perhaps I should also say I choose not to fly in the belly of the plane. I'd rather not be strapped to the wing. I'd just as soon not be on the nose cone of the plane. Is there anything else I should know, Alaska Airlines? You know, it gets worse than that. As we're walking up the rickety staircase, Soviet Union style, circa 1975, Boeing 737, that is in desperate need of a paint job. I mean, when I say desperate, I don't mean not a few scratches. I mean, it was atrocious. I was just... I couldn't believe I'm boarding this aircraft. And if you can't tell, I'm a nervous flyer. I told you that a few weeks ago. You don't want to travel with me. You especially don't want to travel with me on the back of one of these cattle cars. I get up there, and and the the staircase is shaking. And, you know, people are climbing up. And this is not what Barack Obama, President Obama, climbs down and, and, you know, kind of gets off of Air Force One and salutes. That's a skookum staircase. This thing might have been made of uh, an erector set. I don't know. We get up there, we get close to the plane, and I notice that there's primer along certain seams, and there's like patches, and there's... I'm, lo- I'm looking at this thing thinking, I can't believe I'm getting on board. Well, to make matters worse, Nicole, our very grumpy, very angry stewardess, greets us, and she's cleaned up some mess, and she throws down a wet towel and just leaves it at the, the, the corner of the fuselage. She says, you know what? My caterer didn't want to clean it up. Why should I? And she leaves it. <laughs> What am I going to do? It's almost midnight. 
Am I really going to take my family and go check in the hotel and say, you know what, I'm flying some other way? No, we get on board. The pilot comes bouncing up the steps, and he goes into the back, and he talks to Nicole, and he says, um, she says, you know, I didn't want to be on this flight. You know, they had to pay me extra to take this flight. And he goes, yeah, you know, and she goes, she goes, well, yeah, aren't you an L.A. pilot? And he goes, yeah, I'm just covering for somebody. I'm thinking, great. So now I've got an L.A. pilot negotiating mountain peaks at 37,000 feet with me on board. He doesn't know the area, doesn't want to be on board. Neither, neither does Nicole. I'm just thinking to myself, what am I doing here? And better yet, I decided occupy prosperity. Occupation proclamation, if you're not happy in your work, get out. And this is what I would tell every single steward or stewardess or pilot or anybody else working in the airline industry. If you're not happy, if you're not making enough money, if you're not doing what you were born to do, you're not living your purpose, get out. Because what you don't know is you have an impact on my life. And you have an impact on every single person you touch or ignore or hip check as you walk by with a beverage cart. I'm saying, if you're not meant to do this, if this isn't your calling, get out and do something else. And I don't care if you work at a gas station, you work in a retail store, you work in real estate, you work in radio, whatever it is. If you're not happy doing what you're doing, stop it and get out and leave me alone because you have an impact on my life. I have a friend who's in the airline industry. She's a steward and she does a great job. Guess what she does? She says, I love my job. Here, here. Good for you. If you don't love your job, get off of that plane. Oh, find what you're passionate about and do that. Even if you have to start in your part-time. Take a little bit of time, work full-time on your job and part-time on your future and part-time on your fortune. And flight attendants, you don't know what we just came from. We were coming from a funeral. We're coming from a service. And all I have to do is sit there and listen to you complain I've got nothing better to do. You don't even have a clue what I just went through. I don't have a clue what you're going through either. But, man, don't you bring it to work and don't you treat me like that. And if, if you ever have an opportunity to fly C-16A, gate A, no, you're being shoved to the last class at Alaska Airlines. I will keep you apprised as to what they tell me. So far, I've been assured that somebody at top management will be in touch with me. Yeah, right. That's a joke. It isn't going to happen. We've got great stuff happening today. Blackwater Bend Mindbender. You could win one of two free coffees we'll be giving away. We'll also be talking with Thomas at Homer Fishing Game, Alaska Fishing Game at the Homer office. What do you need to do to look out for bears and make sure they stay off of your back doorstep? And Lauren Lehman was at the Republican convention. His reaction to the outburst from the floor when we come back on Alaska Matters. <laughs> Spring has arrived and it's time to make plans to get that parking lot cleaned up. Rake Rock Construction is taking orders now for parking lot sand sweeping. Rake Rock Construction has the right equipment and beginning this May will professionally clean your parking lot with sweeping and water. Call and make your appointment today at 235-1522. That's 235-1522. Licensed, bonded and insured Rake Rock Construction. Oh no, I was taking a bath. I'm out of water. No problem. Call more and more your locally owned water supplier. 24 hour service from your locally owned water company. Tired of working with an outside corporation? Want to support local business and get better service for less? Then put more and more to work for you. 235 8837. More and more is next door. 235 8837. Hi folks, Jackie Ray here for the Caribou Family Restaurant. The Caribou Family Restaurant wants you to remember how happy, happy, happy you were at Thanksgiving. Past Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. Valentine's Day, how happy you are with the service, how happy you were with the highest quantity of food. More than you can eat every day at the Caribou Family Restaurant. How happy you were with the quality of food. How happy you were with the prices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In fact, the Caribou Family Restaurant wants you to remember each and every time you hear or see the word happy, how happy, happy, happy you were with sumptuous prime rib on Friday and Saturday nights, breakfast any time of the day or night. So if you want to be happy again, stop by the Caribou Family Restaurant and be happy every day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Lake Street and Pioneer Drive in downtown Homer. Check it out. Be happy every day at the Caribou Family Restaurant, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. See you here, 235-5148. Orders to go.
You are listening to Alaska Matters. I'm Christopher Story, your host for Great Adventures in the Last Frontier. This portion of the program brought to you by Blackwater Bend. Here's your mind bender. Remember, superior coffee and service with a smile. They get it at Blackwater Bend. Old fashioned customer service at Blackwater Bend Espresso with gourmet treats and cinnamon rolls. You cannot get enough of Blackwater Bend coffee. Trust me, I've been traveling for two weeks. I haven't had a good cup of coffee till I got back to Alaska at Blackwater Bend. Today, you could walk away with one pound of coffee from Blackwater Bend. Can't get it enough? Well, you can get it at home. Never leave Homer without your Blackwater Bend. Here's the question. Who was booed off the stage, basically? Who was booed off the stage at the Alaskan Republican Convention? Was it A, Lisa Murkowski, B, Joe Miller, or C, Sarah Palin. Call right now. Do it. You're playing for a bag of custom-blended Blackwater Bend coffee, beans, and there could be yours. Call right now. 226-3933. 226-3933. Please welcome to the program Thomas. He's our game expert at the Homer Office of Fish and Game. Welcome to Alaska Matters, Thomas. Thanks, Chris. Good to have you back. Now, you cleared some stuff up for us before about hairs and how to deal with the hairs around here, and I think basically uh, that's sort of resolving itself. Now, waking up, are bears. What are the biggest attractions that we have around our house and may not even know it? I mean, garbage is sort of an obvious one. Is there anything else that we should do to, to help prepare to uh, keep an eye out for those bears and keep them away from our doorstep? Indeed, there's, there's a slew of, of possible attractants that we'll have to be aware of. Basically, anything that could be a source of calories for a bear. And not only does that include garbage, but that... Uh, bird seed, uh, compost piles that have kitchen scraps in them, um, bone meal, uh, fish scraps, um, barbecue uh, grill waste, um, anything that could be uh, a calorie for a bear is a bear attractant and is basically a, a welcome mat to bring bears into a neighborhood. Your puppy smeared with bacon grease. <laughs> Dog food actually is another big one. A lot of people choose to store their dog food out on the back porch, and that's a, a, a very major bear attractant. Yeah, no kidding. Now, have there been any reportings here in the local Homer or Ketchumac Bay area so far? Uh, I haven't had any direct reports. I haven't uh, spoken uh, recently with the Homer Police Department. They field a lot of questions, too. But just from flying around doing some uh, some uh, field work there, are definitely bears out and about in the greater Homer area, that's for sure. I don't know if you heard about that guy over on Kodiak. He's from Fairbanks. He was hunting, and he shot a bear. He took it down a grizzly, and then another one came out of the den and charged him full on, grabbed him by the head. They rolled down a hill for about 50 feet. Then the bear ran off, and his son bandaged his wounds a little bit. This is a grizzly. And then they proceeded to then skin out the other bear. <laughs> so, wow. I've never wanted a, a hide or anything that bad in my life. But <laughs> anyway, well, now let me ask you this. So let's just say that we've taken your precautions. We don't have attractants. We don't have calories waiting out there for them. A bear comes onto my property. I've got a can of pepper spray. Is it really going to do any good? Because whenever we see the police use it on the moose, they end up having to just, it sort of just really upsets the moose and they end up having to put it down anyway. Um, is pepper spray just basically seasoning for us? <laughs> I mean, does it work? Well, it depends how it's used and what the circumstances. If if you're at your house and you can, uh, you know, safely get to a doorway or in the garage without running and eliciting a chase, then your best bet is to just go inside. Sure. If you're out in the field and you're walking down a trail and you have bear spray, if you surprise a bear and um, and, and it results in the bear coming at you or charging you, then bear spray is, is a good option. Uh, but it, it needs to be used uh, correctly. Uh, people that, that choose to carry it around should should buy an extra bottle and, and practice with mm -hmm. it so they so they know how far it goes. And, um, and keeping track of, of wind direction is pretty important, too, when you got a big uh, <laughs> right. spray. You don't want to be uh, coming back at you. But there's, there's a lot of different safe things people can do uh, in and around their, their homes and, and in the field, along with using bear spray. You mentioned something. You said if you, if you can get to the house and not elicit a charge. In other words, 
you could, though, by running, create a situation where you get chased where they otherwise might have wandered off if you just hold still. Yeah. If, if you're out on your porch and, and a bear walks across your backyard, the best course of action would be to uh, make some noise, let it know that it's not welcome, uh, and if, if that doesn't do any good, uh, you know, you're you have the option of, of going inside. You're not putting yourself in harm's way. Mm -hmm. um, right. and the bear's reaction is, is going to be dependent on a lot of different factors. There's no set response that an individual bear is going to have because um, it might be a, a, a big, old, dominant male. It might be a sow with cubs. It might be a young bear. It might have a history of eating garbage in your neighborhood. It might be a brand new one coming out of the woods. All those right. um different bears are going to have a different response. Well, Thomas, do you want us calling you at, at Fish and Game, or should we call the police when we have a bear sighting in our neighborhood, or does it depend on whether we're urban or rural as to whether or not it's a, a cause for alarm? Well, it, it, if, if a homeowner thinks that they're under a, a immediate threat uh, and there's a personal safety issue, certainly your, your state troopers or local police are a, a good first call to make. If, if you're just concerned about a you know, sightings of bear in your, bears in your neighborhood, uh, and you'd like some advice or any updates on activity, uh, certainly Fish and Game is a good venue for those questions. Very good, and that number is 907-235-8191. Here with me is game expert Thomas with the Homer Office of Alaska Fish and Game. Thank you, Thomas, and if, uh, if I see a bear, I'm going to call you. Thanks, Chris. Okay, have a great day. Don't go anywhere. We've got Lauren Lehman coming up with his reaction to what happened on the floor of the Republican Convention and your answers to the Blackwater Bend Mindbender when we come back on Alaska Matter. <laughs> on the road to Anchorage the other day, in the distance, yes, I could see the bright lights of Blackwater Bend Espresso. While my gas tank was full, I was running on empty. Blackwater Bend Espresso, just what I needed. Along with my Black Mancino, which is a quad shot Americano in a 16 ounce glass, without any cream, just like God intended it. I also got a ham and cheese croissant. I'm telling you, that was the highlight of my trip. Blackwater Bend Espresso, never leave Homer without it. Panoramic Heights, spectacular ocean and mountain views, including volcanoes and incredible sunsets. Live outside of town, but less than 10 minutes from Homer. Affordable land for your dream home. These lots are priced to sell. Owners will finance, and so will First National Bank Alaska. Call Deborah at Bay Realty at 235-6183 for more information today. 235-6183. And enjoy the privacy and quiet life this wonderful subdivision offers. Or how about 52 acres next door? Celebrate nature. Set amid the rolling hills, peace and privacy can be yours on this 52-acre estate. Live well on this beautiful parcel. Moose, bear, and other wildlife are here to greet you. Come home to a secluded estate, away from the world, but within driving distance to everything. Urban farmers and ranchers will find this a true delight. Call Deborah Lysick at Bay Realty at 235-6183. When you need results, Bay Realty works. I'm Chris Story for Radio Realty. Did you hear about the mother and daughter in North Carolina who have won three lotteries in the last 20 years? Some might say they're lucky, but the key ingredient to their success is they took action. Not a sound investment strategy, really. Wealthy investors are also looked at as lucky. Even after 10, 15, 30 years of investing in real estate, that pays real dividends. Get lucky yourself. Invest in real estate. Radio Realty heard every Wednesday at 1230 on KTEN 102F. Them. Just take those old records off the shelf. I said, listen to them by myself. I'm Chris Story. You're listening to Alaska Matters. Most of the great adventures in the last month here. And we've had some great adventures lately. I don't know if you were following the Alaska Republican Convention over the weekend, but uh, if you answered the question, the mind bender question we had, you could have won a pound of coffee. Here was the question. Who was booed off the stage at the Alaska Republican Convention? Was it Lisa Murkowski, Joe Miller, or Sarah Palin? Well, as you probably know, it was Lisa Murkowski. Here with reaction to all of that was Lauren Lehman, former lieutenant governor of the great state of Alaska, who happened to be on the floor. Lauren, 
what happened and what was your reaction to this when it started at the uh, Republican convention? Well, I, uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't want the only story out of the convention to be that because there were a number of good things that happened. We adopted a very good party platform. We elected delegates of National Convention and some other officers. However, having said that, on Friday evening, uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski was tasked with introducing the main speaker, which is Senator Barrasso from Wyoming. And uh, he's a very fine man. And, uh, you know, my understanding is he's a legitimate conservative. But there was a subset, you know, a, a fairly small set of the Ron Paul supporters who stood up and uh, not not only visually objected uh, to Lisa Murkowski, but also vocally and started and then started chanting. And if you have the clip, uh, you'll see it. But I, my, my guess is it was some 30 to 50 people who did that. Now, uh, I, I found it offensive, and that, that's not the way to express dissatisfaction. Now, I, uh, I, uh, Senator Murkowski votes sometimes the way I don't want her to. And, I, and so I will engage her in conversation and, and try to explain to her why she ought to vote differently. But I try to do it in a constructive uh, way. And, and this was not the way to do it. Now, people I noticed in the video clip, uh, which can be seen at alaskadispatch.com, there seemed to be people that were trying to, there was one woman that sort of stood up in the center aisle and, and seemed to be leading the charge. And the people seemed to be trying to coax her down and, and go sit down already. So the majority of the people there, the majority of the Republicans in attendance were were really trying to quiet them down and, and felt like you that this was sort of embarrassing? Yeah, yeah. you know, we, you, you never want uh, something like that to uh, to break down into fisticuffs, you know, and, and just scrapping like that where somebody could get hurt. And, and you try to diffuse it uh, as, as best as you can. And, and eventually, it you know, it did quiet down. Uh, but to their credit, the next day, when cooler heads prevailed, they apologized. And uh, there was a very public apology, and they invited Senator Murkowski back to hear it and then gave her an opportunity to share her heart, uh, maybe some of the comments she would have made the, the night before had she been given more of an opportunity and, and not get drowned out by that. So, um, what, and, and, Lauren, you mean when you say they apologize, you mean the Ron Paul camp? Y yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the leader of the Ron Paul group apologized for them. Now he didn't. He wasn't the inspiration behind this action. He right. said, "Look, I, I I didn't ask them to do this. This wasn't part of our plan. I, I was up in my room taking a nap because I was so tired from the full day's activities. But you you got to put it in context. A number of the people are new." The party politics they probably haven't been there before and and you know even though they ought to know how to behave in public <laughs> they probably let their passions and their yeah. political passions get away from them and and then sort of in that group mentality yeah uh, you know it, it just just went a little over beyond where they should and joe miller was it appears that the two camps the miller camp and the ron paul camp are sort of coalescing into one movement but he likewise was not in the room and also said that he had nothing to do with the orchestration of the the outburst either yeah well i'm i'm glad to hear that i i did see him at the convention i didn't see him much but uh, i know he was at the convention and then uh, you know i i don't know exactly who was involved i mean i, I looked around and, and and they were people that i typically have not seen at republican conventions Mm -hmm. And, you know, so whether they came from Trapper Creek or Salsa or, or, where, or Goldstream or wherever they, uh, they're from, that, you know, they, uh, they, you know they, they have the right to express themselves. It's just it ought to be expressed in the, in the proper way. But I like what you said because the headline is, is essentially this outburst is it, really stealing the, the news and the headlines. But, but really what you just said prior to that was that there was some real positive things that came out for the Republican Party and, and going forward the delegates have been chosen to go to D.C. and the national or wherever the national um, convention is going to be. So there definitely are some things that could be highlighted, but this, obviously, this is going to sell headlines. Oh, yeah. You know, people like to hear that. They like sure. to think, or, or, or the opponents of Republicans would like to say, oh, the Republicans are in total disarray. That's right. Chaos prevails. Yeah, chaos prevails, but that's not true. Now, I chaired the Platform and Resolution Committee, and we adopted a very fine platform. It's solid. Uh, it's pro-family, pro- 
uh, God, uh, pro-country, pro-military, uh, you know, just the, the, the very basic things that have, that have made us strong as families and as a country are in our platform, and they remain there. And we, mm-hmm. we tighten it up a little bit. And, and we took on President Obama on his failed policies, and, you know, and we want to use this as a basis for winning elections in Alaska, but also for taking nationally and, and saying that these are things that ought to be in, in the national uh, platform. As, as, as well, so some good things came out of uh, out of the convention, and you know, like any party convention, it's spirited debate. Uh, we, we're not one. You know, you get 500 people in a room, uh, each with uh, uh, political and social passions. Uh, you know, they're going to express it in different ways. Would, would do you think anybody felt threatened, or was there any call for security at all, or was it was it literally just sort of a, a rally type outburst that then settled down? Yeah, it, it never it never degenerated into uh, the swinging of fists or no like brass knuckles. Oh, <laughs> uh, there there were some who were I think trying to calm some down and and maybe kind of guide them towards the door and say, look, you know, why don't you step out and cool off a little bit and yeah. come back. Um, but it no, it never degenerated into into fighting, and uh, most people remained seated. And uh, you know, I I, I went over. After that, uh, and after uh, Senator Barrasso was done, and I apologize on behalf of Alaska, mm-hmm. he he kind of took it in stride. He said, "You know, we, I've seen some uh, things similar to this in Wyoming, uh, <laughs> but uh, I said, you know, this this isn't how we normally behave." And uh, I invited him to come back, and he promised me that he would. So, excellent. Well, well, thank you, Lieutenant Governor Lehman. Um, sure. Please feel free to take the floor in the last minute we've got to announce your candidacy for uh, Senate. Oh well, you're uh, Next time. rushing me. You're rushing me just a bit. Uh, <laughs> I, will, I will say this: that it's it's something I'm very interested in, and 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 uh, people approach me, if not every day, certainly several times a week, uh, just with encouragement. Uh, they recognize that we are not being represented well uh, in the U.S. Senate by Mark Begich, and, and they want to they want to see uh, somebody with better values, and not somebody who's going to be a a toady for uh, the president, for President Obama, mm-hmm. and and his failed policies. And you know we can do a lot better. And uh, you know, and, and if that's me, uh, a couple of years from now, great. It uh, it it would be a, a, a tough race, but it's uh, it's one that's worth it uh, in the end. All right, thank you, Lauren. I appreciate it, and you're welcome back here on Alaska Matters anytime. Okay. Have Thanks. a great day. Good guy. Good guy. And one of these days he will be announcing right here on this program. I'm sure that he'll be, I think his term was um, helping Mark Baggage become a property manager again, I think is, is what he said before. I mean, that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good calling. I, in fact, I, you know, I need, I need property managers. So we all do. Hey, assembly meeting tonight, 7 o'clock, regular scheduled meeting at the Soldatna Chambers, Assembly Chambers. And here's what's at stake, possibly that you want to pay attention to, is Ordinance 2012-07. That would amend the uh, Kenai Peninsula Borough Administration to appoint rather than elect service area boards. That seems backwards to me. I don't like this idea at all, so I'll definitely be uh, outspoken about that. I do not like this, but what do you think? It's a representative republic here. We'd like to keep it where... In fact, I'm promoting on Radio Realty tomorrow. We'll talk more about it on uh, 102 FM, KPN Radio Realty, the greatest show on earth second greatest show on earth, we'll be talking about should our tax assessor, in fact, be elected rather than an employee of the borough, should he be an elected official and explain to you why he deserves the eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year job um, every couple of years and in answer to you. And so with this 2012-07 amending the uh, service area boards to be appointed instead of elected, I don't know. I don't like it. What do you think? Better speak up. Thank you, Dave Webb, for engineering the greatest show on earth here, Alaska Matters. I want to thank Tiffany for answering our calls. Let's see real quick who our winners are. Let's see. You. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, Beverly and that appears to be Kyra. Thank you both. Appreciate it. You were right that it was Lisa Murkowski who was uh, treated with disrespect, and it's unfortunate, but I'm glad to hear from Mr. Lehman that uh, other good things did happen at the convention. It wasn't just all the salacious headlines. And if you'd like to, uh, to weigh in on anything, my email is story at xyz.net. Alaska matters, and so do you. The Peninsula's home for unforgettable favorites. Great listening, 620 AM, KGTI.